Hey, what is going on guys? DK. Back at you with another video here to bring the six game NBA main slate on Saturday. And this one, it's going to be another crazy slate. We have a lot of teams very, very uh, shorthanded. So I'll do my best to break it down. But if you guys are new to the channel, welcome. My name is DK. I make daily videos and live stream for NBA and NFL slates on DraftKings. If you guys are unable to watch these YouTube videos, I also upload on Apple Podcasts. Link is down below. It's called the DK DFS Show. And if you're interested in signing for premium content, I offer a few different packages on Patreon.com, NBA, NFL, cover the main and the showdown slates. The sponsor of this video, guys, is Thrive Fantasy. Thrive Fantasy is a player prop site. We're actually building out a lineup on player props. Now, um, some of these, uh, again, we just got news that like basically all the Golden State Warriors are, guys are out, so you can't use those props, but... Um, you pick 10 of the 20 options, the less probable the prop is to occur, the more points you receive. So there's a little bit of game theory, obviously, involved. Um, one pick that really stands out to me here is, where is he? Drew Holiday, 17 and a half points. Definitely like that over. Um, don't expect Giannis to come back. I don't think Middleton plays in this game if he got ruled out. Uh, he was kind of a late, later scratch tonight. But, yeah, I like the over there on Drew Holiday at 17 and a half fantasy, or, uh, real life points, sorry. But, um, yeah, if you guys want to try out Thrive Fantasy, make sure to sign up and use my code. It is DKDFS. It's DKDFS, all one word. And you get 100% match up to $100. They have some pretty big contests for NFL and NBA. Like for NBA tomorrow, $500 to first. It's, a, what, a $20 entry. So uh, 110 entries here. Again, make sure to sign up and use my code, guys. Get that free $100. All right, so before we get into players and the prices, let's take a look back mine up here from tonight. So tonight... It could have been a massive night. It was a good night. It could have been a massive night. And uh, it's because no, Nikola Jokic got in severe foul trouble plus a blowout. Just all pain, guys. Didn't He played like one minute in the third quarter and then got pulled in the fourth quarter because the game was a blowout with like three or four minutes left. So if he didn't get in foul trouble in the game, so competitive, it was another 70-plus fantasy points at least for Jokic. He was on pace for 70-plus. So... Um, yeah, the people that faded Jokic, you guys got bailed out. I'm very, very tilted about it, uh, but it is what it is. I mean, whatever. You, you know, so Jokic is going to go for 100 next game. Like, that, just lock that in. Um, I talked about it on Twitter. I played Max Struss last slate. I'm sure you guys saw what he did tonight, right? He had, like, 50-plus fancy points, couldn't miss. Um, Lowry, of course, smashed, as I knew he would. Um, but, yeah, let's go over the rest of my lineup. So, uh, Drew Holiday, Halburn, Gary Harris, Okiki, Jokic, D'Lo, uh, who also got a little bit of luck here with the blowout, um, Harrison Barnes, and uh, DeMarcus Cousins. So, um, yeah, I mean, the, the, the Bucks are really shorthanded. Obviously, Milton was a light scratch, so um, I thought Drew looked really, really good. Boogie dealt with some foul trouble. Definitely could have had a better game, but um, did enough at his price point. Uh, and then I was really high on the Kings, right? They were they were shorthanded. So I was extremely high based on the whole starting five. I went to Halliburton and Barnes. Both were great. Um, I used two, the two Magic Value and Gary Harris and Okiki because that team had, like, no one. Uh, they both smashed. Um, again, Jokic only got or got in some foul trouble. D'Lo, um, blowout, that hurt his minutes. Plus, I watched a little bit of that game. He should have had, like, at least five more assists, to answer Russell. Like, that was super frustrating to watch. Um, but, yeah, guys, that is it for the look back. Uh, had a nice night in the late slate. One guy I was really high on who I didn't end up playing was Damian Lillard. Played him in the late slate, though. That went really well. Um, and I saw we had some some pretty big winners. Uh, we're going to re retweet a couple of them after this. But, um, yeah, congrats to all you guys. We had a good night. And, oh, well, let's take a look at the winning lineup here in the Thunderdome. So this is the winning lineup. Drew, D'Lo, Kiki, Tatum, Boogie, Dame, Franz Wagner, Jordan Awara. Um, yeah, I mean, no real surprises here. The Bucks and Nuora obviously became uh, much more appealing once Milton was out. Uh, Franz, you know, was – I definitely preferred the Magic Valley. I liked, like, Robin Lopez, Okiki, Gary Harris. Those are, like, the – the guys liked better, um, but you know Franz obviously smashed you out. Unfortunately, one of Carter Jr. a scary injury there, and then yeah, Tatum was okay. D'Lo fifty percent owned in this one as well. Drew Holiday one hundred percent, not a surprise at all there. Okay, so that is it for the look back, guys. Um, again, if you do enjoy all this NBA content, just make sure to hit that like button. Really does help me out, guys. Subscribe, hit the notification bell. Try to get close to that eleven thousand subscriber mark on YouTube. 
Okay, so let's start off with the Knicks and the Celtics. So for the Knicks, we have RJ Barrett out, quickly out, Grimes out, Knox out, Toppin out, and Derrick Rose is questionable. Now he left the game, he did not return uh, last game, so I don't think he plays in this one, which would leave uh, the Knicks shorthanded, but not as shorthanded as some other teams in the slate. So we'll start with Julius Randle at the top of 10-1. You know, there's not a lot to spend up for in the slate, and there's a lot of value options. So, like, I think by default, Randall's going to be popular. Should play mid-30s minutes. Um, you know, the four has been much lower on Randall this year. So, like, the price doesn't really stand out. But, again, then it comes to the point of, like, all right, well, there's so much value on the slate. Like, who are you going to spend up for? So, uh, like I said, by default, he might be pretty popular. So, he makes kind of an interesting fade on, on the slate. Uh, Alec Burks at almost 8K is just too pricey. I know he's going to play big minutes. Um, he's kind of been struggling of late, so I don't love that price. And I don't expect Derrick Rose to play. Evan Fournier, I hate playing this guy, but, I mean, if he can knock down a shot so he did last game, he has upside. He just, you know, this is the floor, right? So just know what you're getting into if you play Evan Fournier. Kemba should still be out of the rotation. Mitch Robinson, Noel should split the sentiments. Neither really stand out to me. Uh, then Miles McBride, kind of out of nowhere, just absolutely smashed one for 15, 9, and 3. Um, you know, Derrick Rose is out. I kind of like Miles McBride for value. He should play a decent amount at the point guard position. So just keep an eye on the Derrick Rose news. But other than that, there's not much else I'm looking to on the Knicks side. Moving on to Boston. So Tatum, like I said, with Randall, there's not much to spend up for. So then kind of just by default, he's going to be popular. Um, he's a guy that should play close to 40 minutes. Um, so no real issue going to Tatum. Jalen Brown at 9-1 feels a little bit pricey. I'd rather go to Tatum. Plus, they're not playing uh, Brown huge minutes. Uh, Horford was out last game. Uh, that was COVID protocols, right? And then Schroeder was a late scratch. Um, it was non-COVID illness. So Schroeder uh, has a chance, I think, to play tomorrow. We'll kind of keep an eye on that. Uh, Robert Williams at 5'7". So they don't have the stats up here, but he played a lot of minutes. So he didn't do much with that uh, with that run here. I'll bring it up on my phone really quick. Um, I think he played like 30-plus minutes, let's see. So... Yeah, he played 37 minutes, Rob Williams. One for seven, 11, and one with a block. So not great, but like, um, assuming Al Horford doesn't come back, and I don't think he will, um, I think Rob Williams is a decent play at the mid range, right? They only played Ennis Freedom 11 minutes. So um, yeah, I think Rob Williams looks pretty appealing. And Tatum played 42 minutes. Smart played 35. Uh, Brown did play 33. Richardson played a decent amount off the bench. He's a guy that. Um, if Schroeder's out again, I think it makes for an okay value play, but there's probably gonna look like there's probably gonna be better value with the teams being uh, more shorthanded, as I said. Um, and other than that, I'm probably not gonna touch the value on Boston. Moving on to Orlando and Brooklyn. So here we go. All right, <laughs> let me bring this up. My phone they, again. It's a little bit annoying. DraftKings doesn't have they don't update like right away, uh, but I'll bring it up. So they started uh, Gary Harris, Carter Jr. got injured, Lopez, Franz Wagner, Kiki. So Kiki played 39 minutes. Franz Wagner, 36. Lopez played 33 minutes. Gary Harris played 36 and played the point. Um, you had Mulder off the bench play 22. Uh, okay, I, I was talking about this in, in the live stream. There's a couple made-up names. There's a couple made-up players here. There's no way. Let me go to him. Um, where is he? There's no way this is a real player, right? There, there's just no way. Whatever a uh, Hassani Gravit is. I, I refuse to believe he's real. I refuse to believe he's real, and I refuse to believe where is he? Did not have him. The other guy up here, uh, Ford. Where's Ford? Is he just not in the player pool? Just not. Yeah, I don't see him. Unless I am literally going blind, right? Ford. No, I just, yeah, don't have him in the player pool. <laughs> So, and he's another guy that I refuse to believe is real. Aleem Ford. It's, it's not a real person. So the Magic literally have two fake players on their team. Um, the other two guys that added BJ Johnson and Schofield I've heard of before. Those, those other guys that I mentioned, they're, they're not real people. Um, but, yeah, so they ran, uh, they did play 10 guys. Again, Card Jr. injured, so now would assume he's obviously not going to play. Obviously, we'll keep it on Cole Anthony, too. I don't think, expect him to play. But, um, yeah, so if Cole Anthony misses, then you're going to have Gary Harris most likely play the point guard again. Um, I think he makes for a really good value play uh, at 4-3. You also have Brooklyn, who's resting everyone. So, like, this is just going to be a game of, um, you know, 
G Leaguers basically playing up going up against each other. Chumo Kiki is going to be super, super popular after the game he put up tonight. Uh, but yeah, him, Gary Harris look really good. I think Franz Wagner looks solid in the mid range. He's going to play big, big minutes. Um, Robin Lopez, I really like. Like, I don't know if he gets 33 minutes again, but if we get anywhere close to that, he makes for a great value. Uh, sure, you can take a Dart and Mulder off the bench. He's still score independent. Um, BJ Johnson, so he played 20 minutes. Um, really, the, the the guys they uh, signed didn't do much. Schofield played 12 minutes. Um, Grabbit actually played the most. He played 24 minutes. I guess you can play this fake player uh, if you want to. And, yeah, they don't even have Ford in the player pool. So, um, yeah, this Magic team, uh, if, if Cole Anthony's out, they're going to be really, really shorthanded once again. Now, if Cole Anthony's in, then obviously it's going to downgrade the value a bit, um, and we'll have to see what they do with the starting lineup. All right, moving on to Brooklyn. So, just like, Kevin Durant, Harden, Kyrie, Mills, Aldridge out. Uh, Harris, Brown, Johnson, Bembry out. Claxton is questionable. And David Duke is probable. Now, I'm not sure if Brooklyn can feel like they might have to sign a couple guys here, right? Because let's just think about this. Blake Griffin's one. Kessler Edwards, two. Cam Thomas, three. David Duke's four. Claxton's questionable, so we don't know if he's going to play. Sharp is five. Galloway, six. So I'm pretty sure they have to sign someone. Even if Claxton plays... That's only seven. Um, so the Nets are going to have to sign probably at least one guy here. Uh, but, yeah, this is going to be like an eight-man rotation here for Brooklyn. They look super, super appealing. Now, Blake Griffin is dust. Like, he is complete dust. But he's going to have to probably play low 30s, low to mid 30s minutes here. And at 5.2K, him and, like, Cam Thomas are probably going to be their go-to guys in offense. So, I like some Blake Griffin. Kessler Edwards has been playing big minutes, uh, 33 last game, 44 the previous. I think he makes for a decent play. And Cam Thomas is, might shoot the ball 30 times in this game. He's a guy that uh, I really like his upside. Now, he still has a somewhat low floor, but the upside is super high in him. David Duke, probable. Um, you know, he, he came back down to earth. I was very tilted of chalk David Duke going for 42 games ago because – uh, I was like, that's that's definitely an outlier performance. He had two blocks, two steals. So, yeah, David Duke would still be solid. I mean, basically you can make an argument for any of these uh, rotation players because they're just going to play massive minutes. Uh, Nick Claxton, if he does play, probably plays mid to high 20s minutes. He would make for a good value play. Dayron Sharp, if Claxton gets ruled out, has to play more. He's only played 13 the last couple of games, but, like, he would probably have to play, like, 20-plus minutes. And if that's the case, he makes a really good value. And then Galloway recently added to the team, only played nine minutes, but, like, he's going to have to play more, too. So, uh, yeah, keep an eye on the Nets and who they end up. I think they're going to have to sign at least one guy, but uh, they might only have seven, eight bodies here for this game. So, this game in general, Magic, Nets, um, I don't think you could pay me $500 to watch this full game. Like, I'll ask you guys. I'll ask you guys, how much would I have to pay you to watch this full game of Magic, Nets, all end of the bench, and G League guys. How much do I have to pay you? All right, Golden State and Toronto. So here we go again, right? Steph Curry, out. Draymond, out. Wiggins, out. Poole, out. Clay out. Wiseman, out. Porter, out. Iguodala, out. So, Warriors, going to be relatively thin, but not as thin as Magic and Nets. Um, I think Underdog recently tweeted out how many players are going to have available. I think it was like 10 still, just because Warriors just have such a deep roster and they play so many guys. But yeah, so available players, uh, Garrett Payton, Damian Lee, Moses Moody, Kaminga, Kavon Looney, Shioza, Doughton, JTA, Beelitz. So they have nine available players. Um, so I'll start with Damian Lee at 3.6K. Um, you know, I would assume he probably starts and could be one of their top options in offense. So uh, definitely have a good amount of interest there in Damian Lee. Kevon Looney at 3.5, like he's been playing mid-20s minutes. Um, I think he's a fair option. The guy that has a good amount of upside if the Mets are there, and they probably should be, is not means a Bielitsa. Um, great point per minute guy, good score, can stuff the stat sheet. So I'm very high on Bielitsa. I would expect... Back to Gary Payton to probably start. He's been productive when he's on the court. You know, good defender. Um, so I like Gary Payton. I think Juan Toscano Anderson is a guy that looks pretty good. A guy can stuff a stat sheet. Um, Jeff Doughton. 
uh, whatever that is, you know, probably get some minutes, but he's not uh, someone I'm super high on. Chioza at the flat min price, he's a guy that, uh, again, can stuff a stat sheet. It's a fair value play. And then uh, Moody and Kaminga viable as well. But really, I think, you know, where I want to focus is probably the starters. Um, and, you know, of these guys, you know, I think probably Bielitsa is going to be the highest usage guy. So he's definitely someone I'm eyeing, but yeah, Golden State value all firmly in play. Going to kind of come down to who ends up starting here. All right, on the Toronto side. So Toronto getting healthier. Um, OG Anunoby practiced, and he might be back here. So that's definitely going to hurt Toronto uh, for DFS purposes. Uh, Chua practiced as well. So like they're getting pretty healthy. Um, Ken Birch doesn't think he's going to play Saturday, but they might have OG and a Chua back. So like, ugh, kind of tough. But yeah, Van Fleet, Siakam, I mean, you're going to have a ton of salary to play with on the slate. And these are two guys that, if the game's his competitive, are going to play big minutes. So I like him for that reason. Scotty Barnes with OG probably coming back feels a little bit overpriced. OG himself in his first game back, I'm probably going to stay away from. Gary Trent Jr., you know the drill by now. You can play him, but he has to get a shot to get value. If a Chew is back, that probably takes Trish Boucher, unfortunately, out of play. So, um, yeah, and then I'm not going to touch any of the value there for Toronto. Clippers and Thunder. So we might have Paul George back. He is currently questionable. Um, if he does come back, he's probably going to be chalked just by default because there's no other guys to spend up for, even though he is definitely overpriced. So, yeah, Paul George plays. Got to like him here. If Paul George misses, then once again, it's going to be Reggie, Morris, Kennard, man, kind of leading this offense. Reggie at 7-4 feels a little bit overpriced. Um, but he should play in a competitive game 35-ish minutes. Marcus Morris at 5'7", has played really well last couple games. Now, he's also shot the ball pretty well, but he's a guy that's going to be one of their top options in offense if Paul George is, in fact, out. Luke Kennard at 5'3", has been playing big minutes. The only downside with him is he's pretty score-independent. Uh, Terrence Mann at 5'2", he continues to play pretty big minutes. He had a bad game last game, but not super worried about that. Zubac got in some foul trouble last game. I think normally he's probably going to play 25 to 28 minutes. Um, Hardenstein, uh, you know, played a lot more last game because of the Zubac foul trouble, but his price is now up. Bledsoe had a decent game off the bench, but I don't know if I can stomach that on a small slate. Um, Boston, Winslow probably get a little bit of run, but not enough for me to consider them. On the Thunder side, so Shea Gildas Alexander at 8.9K. Again, feels a little bit overpriced, but hey, he's going to play probably 35 plus minutes. It's a revenge game narrative if you're into that. And, um, yeah, he's got 50-plus fans for an upside. He just has a little bit of a lower floor this year because there's games where he, uh, you know, doesn't do as much of the peripheral stats. So he's not handling the ball as much with Josh Giddy there. Uh, Josh Giddy himself at 7-1 definitely feels overpriced. I do like Josh Giddy as a player, but I don't know if I can play – or I don't know if I can pay uh, over 7K for him. The value here for the Thunder. So keep an eye on Lou Dort news. He's questionable. If he misses, I think you can consider Ken Williams as kind of a do-it-all guy. Um, went for 35 fancy points last game. Now it's probably a little bit of an outlier, but that's the positive of Ken Williams, right? He can do it in a lot of different ways. They started uh, Aaron Wiggins, who uh, I don't even know if he should be on a G League roster. He's that bad. So there's just absolutely no chance I will ever play Aaron Wiggins um and yeah that's really it for the thunder so let's move on to washington and utah one of the most unappealing games i've seen in a long long time here washington you have almost 10k for bad beal i mean i just can't do that kuzma dinwiddie don't stand out dinwiddie's only playing like 25 minutes he's been god awful um harrell and gaffer are gonna split the center mats but i don't know if i want to touch either of them against rudy gobert uh, KCP's price is up, and he's scoring dependent. This this Washington team looks pretty unappealing. On the Utah side, well, might look a little more appealing here. Donovan Mitchell dealing with the stomach virus. Keep an eye on this news. If he ends up sitting here, that's going to open up a lot of pretty solid plays here for the Jazz, right? Like Conley, Clarkson will both look uh, pretty good. Uh, and then those secondary options like O'Neal, Ingles, Gay all get a pretty big bump too, so... Pretty big news there, Donovan Mitchell. Now, Donovan Mitchell ends up playing, as I said, with a couple other stars. He's one. Of, he's going to be, you know, relatively popular just because there's not a lot of great spend ups in the slate. So, have interest in Mitchell if he plays. Rudy Gobert almost nine k. I mean, I do like the spot here against Washington. Price doesn't really stand out to me. Now, if, if Mitchell's in, I'm probably not going to touch like the secondary plays here because I just don't think it makes sense. Uh, guys like again, Conley, Clarkson, O'Neal, Ingles, Gay would be guys would consider if Mitchell is out. 
And then white side at 4K, where there being so many good value plays, I just don't think it's necessary to go there. If there if this slate lacked value, then I would definitely consider white side. But on a slate like this, I just don't think it's I don't think we have to go there. And finally, Cleveland. So uh Jared Allen, 8.7K. I mean, the the Bucks are pretty thin in the front court. They're gonna start boogie most likely and sandro's gonna be the backup five so like jared allen he should be able to have his way in the glass even though he's overpriced i kind of like him here in the spot and same with darius garland he's playing massive minutes in competitive games so uh the two top guys here for cleveland i think look pretty good even though they're both a little bit overpriced uh evan mobley at 7-3 keep eyeing this he's questionable if he can't go um to open up more minutes for a guy like dean wade um if evan mobley plays i think He's a decent option. He has a little bit of a lower floor than Allen and Garland, but has a similar ceiling. Lori marketing has been pretty disappointing of late. He's 5.6K. Um, probably not going to go there. I don't know why it's not loading right now. Let's see. Yeah, it's just not going to load. All right. Um, Kevin Love at 5'3". Um, probably plays low 20s minutes off the bench he's been pretty productive when he's out there but right now just a contrarian option i don't mind going to ricky rubio like he's gonna play 25 to 30 minutes he's gonna be a guy that can stuff a statute when he's on the court and then yeah dean wade started last game had a nice game but he's a pretty low usage guy when he plays alongside other you know competent starters you know he had a couple of big games what three four weeks ago when cleveland just had everyone out so I don't know if I necessarily trust that Dean Wade game, so I'm probably not going to consider him. And finally, the Milwaukee Bucks. So, um, yeah, Mike Budenholzer fashion, Chris Milton, late scratch. Uh, so, Drew Holiday, 8.2K. He's probably going to play mid-30s minutes. He looks like a great spend up here. Um, Middleton, if he somehow ends up playing, looks good, but I don't expect him to play. Pat Connaughton at 5.4. The price doesn't stand out, but he should play big minutes. Uh, Grayson Allen, well, he's gonna probably going to shoot 15 times. He still has a somewhat low floor, though, because he's scoring dependent, but the minutes are going to be there for him in a pretty short-handed team. Boogie Cousins, 3-8, dealt with some foul trouble, but he's going to be productive on the court. I like him for value. Uh, him and Sandro will most likely split the center minutes. Would prefer going to Boogie. Um, and then Nawara, he played massive minutes tonight. He's only 3.6, I think he makes for a decent value. I don't think we have to consider guys like Rodney Hood, George Hill, even though they will be in the rotation and get some pretty de decent minutes. There's just better value elsewhere, right? So, all right, guys, that is going to wrap it up for the video. And most likely uh, after I make this, there's going to be a lot of stuff that changes. So be ready to, uh, again, uh, keep an eye on news and, and make some changes. But um, yeah, really appreciate all you guys coming to check out the video. Thanks again, guys. Have a great night and I will see you all in the next one.